In Judges chapter 16, verse 2, the Bible says, And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson has come hither, and they what? They compassed him in. They the, Literally, like the Zodiac, they circled him in. The beast surrounded him. The strong bulls of Bashan and Leo and the dogs compassed, made a big circle around him. Notice this. And laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city. Do you, re, do you remember what God said to Israel? He said, you shall be as the stars in heaven and you will possess, you will possess the gates of your enemies. Think about what Christ told Peter, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, the rock of your confession and me, I will build my church, and the gates of your enemies, hell, will not prevail against you. Look at this. Laid for him all night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all the night, saying in the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. When did they kill Jesus? They were up all night, and they killed him in the, in the morning. They began to crucify him at the, uh, in the morning. And Samson lay till midnight and rose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them where? On his shoulders. What did Jesus do when he went to the hill called Mount Calvary, Golgotha? He laid the cross upon his shoulders, and he put them on his shoulders and carried them, look at this, up to the top of an hill that is before Hebron. Here we have Samson and the Zodiac, the beast, have circled him around about, and they're going to kill him. And yet Samson gets victory over them because he takes what was meant to trap him in and enclose him. Think about things in your life that are trying to keep you in bondage. And Christ takes the gates of his enemies on his shoulders and he took them on top of the hill and there he got victory over all the beasts that surrounded him. I absolutely love this. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 5. When the waves, think of Aquarius, when the waves of death compassed me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid, the sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God, and he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. Notice this. Because remember, I, I, I made a point to, to illustrate to you earlier that um, the war in heaven between the, between the good angels and the bad angels, okay, Lucifer being one of those bad angels, there was one-third of the angels that was for Lucifer. Man, that's, that's got to be a lot. Well, there was two-thirds th that were for Michael and for, for Jesus Christ. Okay, So that's more, isn't it? Notice this story. I, I like to look at this as a story of the spiritual warfare that goes on around us every day. 2 Kings chapter 6. Remember Elisha. Okay, Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great, look at that word, host host okay and they came by night think of the stars and and did what compassed the city about and when the servant of the man of god who was elisha risen early and gone forth behold and host compassed the city both with horses and chariots and his servant said unto him alas my master how shall we do and he answered fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full. Mountain's a picture of heaven, by the way. The mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. You know, it, it does. It feels like in our lives sometimes that... The enemy has just circled you around. It's got you trapped on all sides. Remember the Israelites there uh, in, in their, by, by, um, by the Red Sea. And here is Pharaoh and his chariots and horses. Remember what the description of the, the beasts, the angels that are in the bottomless pit in Revelation chapter 9. Chariots and horses. Same thing, people. God's trying to illustrate to us that as we approach these last days, we really don't have anything to fear. God's got them all. Okay? And by the way, they had the faces of men, Revelation chapter 9. Okay? And Jesus said, don't, don't be afraid of the faces of men. Don't be afraid of them. 
Colossians 2, verse 13, it was all done at the cross. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened. He's made you alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, doing what? Nailing it to his cross, where the beast surrounded him, the zodiac, and having spoiled who? Principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. That's why Psalm 22, the number 22 is the number for revelation. And and here we have Christ saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And here we have Christ, a picture of Christ on the cross, because it says what he said on the cross. And they said, they parted my garments and cast lots for my vesture. They mocked him in Psalm 22, and they pierced his hands and feet. So here is Christ with all these evil angels encompassing him that we see in Psalm 22. They compassed him about. And yet Christ made a show of his enemies openly, triumphing over them in his death on the cross. It's the finished work of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor who? Angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, neither nor height, nor depth, nor any other what creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ephesians chapter 1, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And I'm here to tell you, this, this zodiac thing is sweeping this, and now we have this new sign, the serpent bringer. Now he's going to bring the serpent to mankind, and man's going to have his DNA all messed up, and it's, going to, and it's a terrible, terrible time. God says, don't worry about it. I, I, I've already defeated them. I, I, we, we already possess the gates of our enemies. We already have it. Can these evil angels separate us from the love of, of Christ? No. They can't do it, okay? And um, there's a couple places in the Bible where you find references to some of these constellations. And I want you to notice this, and here's really what I want you to get to. There are those who choose to worship the stars. I choose to worship the one who made the stars and who holds them in his hand and controls them. They don't tell God what to do. They don't determine the course of of mankind on planet Earth. God does that, but he uses them. And God was trying to convince Job of this. Job had been through this terrible ordeal, crying out to God, pleading to God. You know how we get sometimes when we, we lose a little faith. We don't have a lot of trust in God. You know what happens. God always steps in to remind us. Let me show you how powerful I am. You see, I like to go out and look at the stars at night, especially in wintertime because the air is clean. And out where I live, there's not a lot of light, so you can see out there. Where I go uh, deer hunting every year, there's no lights anywhere for miles, and you can see everything out of the sky at night. And it looks like they're right here. And I just want, I don't wonder at the stars and say, oh, star bright, star, you know, I don't wish upon a star. I pray to the God who made those stars because God is the one who controls them. He told Job in Job 38, Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Remember Orion's belt? That's his bands. Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Knowest knowest thou the ordinances of heaven Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? God said, I made them. I control their movements. I control their actions. I control their bands. I'm the one who set their movements in order. And I'm always in charge. Why would you want to pray to the stars or to the angels? And let me say this to our Roman Catholic friends. These saints that you have a day for, these saints that you pray to, why would you want to pray to them 
When the Bible says that through Jesus Christ, we can go directly to the throne of God. We don't need a saint. We don't need a pope. We don't even need an earthly priest. We already have a high priest. Why would we want to pray to stars and the moon and the sun and worship them when we could just go to the creator of all of these? His name is Jesus Christ. Thank God for the stars giving us the signs and the seasons. But thank God for the one who made those stars. This is Pastor Mike. I've enjoyed myself today. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.